to jump in and here he is. Uh, it's, it's, it's on offer. How are you, buddy? What's going on? I just went through uh, a little tutorial on the front side floater. Did you? And you know how many variations of it there is, but um, uh, the main point is how you get over that. You know, when when you're coming at that thing, if you're if your board if the front of your board gets hits it at all and slows your speed down at all, you try to just smoothly get over it, and then when you get over it, you pick up so much speed on top of the lip or yeah, White is, is is that for kind of like the one you, you there's a clip you put up beforehand where you're kind of up on the lip as opposed to climbing it. You kind of come up on the lip and ride at, right across it. Yeah, I mean sometimes it's a um, it's a it's a bit of a sissy move because I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to hit it. I want to go. You can go around it. Uh, 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 you can go around it, but sometimes it's like really. I mean, I think when I think of like Archibald used to do these super, super late ones. Yeah, and they're almost like, he he was almost doing like an off the top, but it turned into a floater, yeah? Well, you know how the way would curl almost to the point where it, would, it, would, it, was, uh, it was unable to get up there. He could, he could, and this is, I went through this right here, is, is you sink the board down and then you have to lift it up and then if you if you can lift it up without getting hit by that lip and get right here, it just pushes you off of it. You got to and then you got to move your way to the back foot so that you come down like an airplane like that. Um, yeah. So like climbing the outside of the lip. Yeah. And there's the <laughs> shift of your body without your the shift of your lower body without your upper body going backwards. Otherwise, it sends it kind of sends you in that window, the winding down the windows which yeah. loses your, you can still pull it, but you, you know, you lose your speed, you lose your momentum and you lose the, the, you lose the aesthetic of the actual turn. And I was just saying in the, in the, in, in, in the early eighties, when I was in surf competitions that all of them would end probably the same as yours that end in off, except East coast a little different, but might've been onshore the whole time, but it was, it would go from being glassy in the morning and then it'd be low tide onshore closeouts at like, yeah. you know, Manhattan beach or, you know, I mean, you'd just be like, okay. So we had to learn how to really do these like horizontal, horizontal whitewater floaters and hopefully get to like an open pace at the end to do a turn to get a score. And uh, they were, you, you didn't really think about it, but they turned out to be something you could use later when you're at a point wave and you're d really deep on the point wave. And you're like, I think I can make this section. I just got to stay yeah. high and then float and then float and then float. You know, like there's that, that, yeah, that lateral down that, that constant lateral climbing. Yeah. And when you, you know this, when you come down from a floater and you, you, you you're, you're sort of in the, 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 the white water, and then it, you can tip your board so that, that when the rail touches the green part of the wave, even if it's the flat, if you can touch it and then get back up there, you know those waves that are closing yep. out or you're behind it. If you spend too much time in the, in the flat, you slow down. But if you can go kick, come, and get right back up and do another one, you can, you, you know, those are, they aren't the spectacular thing. But they're kind of they're kind of they're kind of the exciting thing. And then there's a certain size of wave. You're like, I just, I can't, there's no that's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's that's that size? Not, that's not I, I often I often think that um, if skaters, like if really good skaters, that could like, you know, jump twenty stairs or whatever, were were surfers and they and they went out at like back door off the wall and they would hit those closeouts and try to stop them in the flats. <laughs> that would be fun to watch. What? Well, yeah, they, 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 that's a really good, I mean, imagine the speed they pick up going down those stairwells. It's, but they come off of this, but see, the thing is they come off of the stairwell. They don't come off of the stairwell 10 feet. They come at the bottom of, even though they're going a thousand miles an hour, when they come off the stairwell, it's still the size of the stairwell. So that was the, that's the trick that I thought Archibald was super good at is, when you hit the when you hit the floater, if it's a big floater, if you can delay it so that when you come off of the wave, it's at the bottom of the wave, 
and you can project out in front of it, you can pull it. But if you try to come off of the wave up too high and fly, you know, like a back door or whatever, you know, it's, it's so hard to stay right over the stop, right over the top of the, you know, your head right over the center of the board. I mean, what did you think? Yeah, be, well, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta unweight and, and then compress at the same time, right? So you, you get, you wanna get low and wide, but if you're pushing on the board, as you're going down, the board's gonna kind of push away from you. So it's like that unweighting and just balancing it perfect up into the wind or with the speed or whatever. What do you mean by I saw, wide? I, I saw, uh, what's that? What do, you mean, what do you mean by wide? You know what I mean? You gotta well, unweight. if you're gonna have that big, if you're gonna have that big free fall drop, just wider stance, you know, and just stability. Mark Sainsbury, backside floater king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, Remember those, some of those floaters that Pedersen Rosa, his stance was so wide, mm -hmm. so impressive. I, th I, thought, I, I thought I saw him doing some pretty good ones in Fiji, or maybe it was Reunion. I'm not sure, but I remember going, going, wow, he's the only guy doing a floater out at Chopu. Do you remember those? Yeah, you probably shouldn't do those. <laughs> <laughs> if you're doing a floater at Chopu, you're I fucked guess. up somewhere in the first couple seconds you're riding. <laughs> I, I think those are worth a study though uh the you know what i mean i think those are worth going back and taking a look at but i, I think you're right so you, you're on the you're on the lip and then you stay with the lip and then you and then before it has that shock wave you can project away from it and yeah. get out into that if you can do it from a low point it's kind of similar to that handrail right yeah you get that clean face out of it i've often thought that and I haven't seen anyone try it yet, but I've felt it in my own board where like, let's say you climb, climb a lip and then the wave pitches and you're above, you're just slightly above and behind that lip. As you're coming down, I think you can get enough energy off that to do a reverse or a shove yeah. it or something. You know, you can get lift off of that, um, off of that pitching lip that you're on. So I'm waiting to see somebody's gonna, gonna get it. Maybe I should start trying or to tell like Eli Hanneman or one of those kids, but you know, as you're starting to come out, kick the tail out and go into reverse and do a full reverse on the air out of, of, of you know, on one of those ones that say six or eight foot on the face. What's and, the best float? Do you, do you have like a memory of like one of the best ones you've ever done? Um, I don't know. I have the memory of one of the longest ones I ever did it was in yeah. uh, Rio. I was, I was in heat with Ross Williams and I got a big barrel and then I had this super fast, long double up section and I sort of got up on the lip and it just let me keep finding this, the, the energy under the board, like to, to get some friction on the fins, you know, get some tension on the fins. And I just, I probably floated for about 20 yards or whatever up on this lip until it finally pitched and threw me out with it. <clears throat> and, you um, pump on top of the lip? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you can actually pump and, um, yeah, you can, you can find some speed up there, but you know, ultimately, eventually, it's going to pull you back down. But there, there is a little pocket you can kind of ride up on there, for sure. You, you, you know I saw how, like uh, Noah, but Noah, but in the comments. He said Dino is the floater king. Yeah, he was incredible at him. Of those, of the, what I remember from Dino is the backside ones. Yeah, the backside ones. Like I remember, it, like rock and Ocean roll Beach ones. or somewhere, like uh, the PSAA contests. I remember him doing them at Salt Creek, like just poo, and then and and throwing the tail towards the beat and, and rock and rolling them down. I I I, de I definitely uh, I definitely stole a I stole a little bit of that. Um, what 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 would you say? Uh, like, what would you say is like the the best floater you've ever seen? If you can you remember like. It's, it's not a super spectacular thing, but it's kind of like, I don't know, some of those, maybe the rock and roll ones, you know, like, I don't know. I think there was something nice to <clears throat> growing up when, when I did and when you did, you know, you were a couple years older than me, but, but at that time. I'm not anymore, was, though. We no, not up. anymore. I caught up. I caught up. Oh, sorry. Oh. Someone was calling me. Oh, you cut off for a sec. <laughs> Slap him. Don't call him. Um, you know, there was something to growing up in that era when everything wasn't filmed and, 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 um, you know, pictures were 
not all sequences because it wasn't digital and guys didn't want to waste their film, right? And yeah. so when you when you ask me that, best floaters I've ever seen. There was one that Richard Schmidt did at Sunset back in the early '90s or late, maybe it was the late '80s. And he's on a big board and there's about an eight or ten foot wave, and he did this floater, and I only saw a picture of it, but it it put so many seeds in my brain. <clears throat> Excuse me. It put so many seeds in my brain of what you could do. You know, what are the possibilities? And Shane, Shane Haran used to talk about um, doing 360s on big open faces, like a proper carving turn all the way around where you're not really using the lip, you're carving it completely um, instead of doing like a tail release. And um, he talked about it at Sunset, but I think Sunset's too flat for it, personally. I think, um, I think Holly has a much better wave for that. But probably the best floaters and obviously they're dated like so for the time the best floaters i ever saw were probably um mark sainsbury in the world championships against boothy and all those guys in 86 in england and it was like the floater wasn't really a maneuver yet and sanga had that real wide stance with a low center of gravity and he would just get up on these backside floaters he's a regular footer but a lot of people on here wouldn't even know that name um unfortunately sang a diet of a brain aneurysm when he was surfing on the central coast yeah. back in 91 or 92 really sad. Really sad. yeah um but he was a great surfer and he <clears throat> he had that really low center of balance so that was a maneuver that really fit him well and he he seemed to be able to just stay up stay up on the lip forever and he it's like he found that extra little bit of pocket of speed up there and um, remember, I'd love to see some footage of that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's worthy of going back and looking at footage, you know, all the way back, all the way back to, to when footage, when you could see film, really. Um, but going back and looking at certain things, um, uh, maybe how, how like light footed do you have to be uh, to, to do a floater? It, there's a lightness to it that especially when there's like all that turbulence in the in the in the white water do you see it as kind of like a almost like a bit of an like you're i mean the floating the word float is kind of refers to it being slightly aerialistic you know yeah i think there's something to that because it's you know a lot of airs aren't set up with a deep bottom turn just like floaters aren't you know it's a more lateral kind of horizontal maneuver and yeah. um, so I would think a lot of, and, and doing airs is unweighting, but also keeping your, either grabbing and, and, and corking a turn, corking air or um, just keeping your, your weight and above it gravity wise. So I would think obviously guys who are good at airs would be really good at floaters, you know, more than a, maybe more than a power surfer. I think you have to be light a little bit on your feet to, uh, to do the proper lengthwise super long and and free fall kind of uh floaters you know like tom carroll stands out for doing a carve at pipeline but not for doing a floater at choku yeah because i think <laughs> uh i think tom's you know with respect to tom i i think tom's quite heavily back footed yeah yeah a floater a floater you know requires moving the weight forward but in saying that i'm sure you can still do some pretty sick ones but but like um someone who's maybe um i mean how i mean i think of machado too he 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 like uh gets up on onto a floater and seems to move his back foot even forward um to get who, maybe who does machado Oh, Rob, yeah. Rob's so light on his feet. Yeah, yeah. So precise, you know. That's, a, that's one thing. I just surfed with Rob so much through the 90s, 80s and 90s. And, and um, that was, the one thing about him, he's maybe the most precise surfer of all time. His, um, when we were at, a, when we were at, at a Macaroni's on our, on our September session trip, he, was, he looked so, he was so precision. I was like, wow, it's some of the most precise serving I've ever seen. You know, um, I was at, that was a that was a really fun that was a really fun trip. It was pretty funny seeing you 
we'd been there for two days getting barreled off our head and then you showed up like <laughs> and, we, and i remember thinking go for it kelly i'm so tired just entertain us bro and you were like ah! <laughs> that was so funny. yeah i was so 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 just to give some people a background on that so um uh thicker than water the movie thicker than water that jack johnson filmed and chris malloy helped put together and, and produce and edit and all that stuff <clears throat> they released that just the week we were going on that trip to um to do september sessions which we didn't know what it was to be called right um yeah. but i agreed with i agreed uh, with chris that i would fly to um tokyo with him and maybe osaka i forget where we went but we went and did did premieres for thicker than water and so i had already agreed with him to do that months before or whatever so on the way to indo to meet you guys uh i stopped in tokyo for like two or three days to go do that and so i missed what you know ross and shane made sure to let me know was maybe the best day of surf they ever had at last <laughs> right <laughs> so, so you guys are out there for like two days getting just piped off your heads and then you have to come 90 miles back into the mainland to get me overnight and me and luke actually luke egan jumped uh jumped on the he got in the same time i did and um i, I remember getting on the boat with you guys and uh and you guys all were like we might leave we just got the best waves we've ever seen <laughs> and i was like that's killer all right thanks guys great to great to on a trip with you but you guys are so fried already and the whole time I was just psyching. I never, I never got the surf you guys did. I got fun waves, but um. you, you, so Shane, Shane and I. Um, it was so funny because Shane and I, before we surfed, we're, you know, anytime, you know, you Shane, we all got together. We're always like, you know, so excited. Hey, what's up? You know, I was so excited. We're. I remember saying to Shane, or Shane saying to me, going. Dude, I can't believe we only have 11 days. Like, it's like, it seems so short, like 11 days, that, right? And then Shane yeah. and I served eight hours the first day and eight hours the second day. It was like 16 hours and two days in the in the equatorial sun and just, bur I mean, burn. <laughs> and I remember before you got there, I remember looking at, at Shane and Shane looking at me going, dude, I, I, like, how am I even going to serve? Like, I don't even should we just go? Like, we're not going <laughs> to, like, I can't, I don't know how I'm going to surf tomorrow. That's like, there's no way. <laughs> so when you showed up, we were like, yay. You'd rather than like, oh no, another person to, you know, another person to take waves, you know, like, it was like, yeah, entertain us, man. Go for it. <laughs> and and yeah. I, I remember just sitting there watching you going, man, bat out of the cage. Just, <laughs> you did this top turn. You did this top turn that was so sick in front of me. Came off the bottom with so much projection and 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 he just hooked it. No, like there was no hesitancy. No, you know a lot of people go up and do a top turn and they get stuck because they put too much weight on the back foot. So they position the turn radically but don't come out of the turn. He just went up there and went wham and came right out of the turn. And I remember thinking. Oh my God, that was the best turn, best top turn I ever seen. You remember? That it? was that was Rob. It was you? Or that was me? Yeah, that was oh, you. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know which one. I don't know which one. Where were we? At? We were at. Uh, it, was, it, was at Lances. Lances? It, it was at Lance's. Lances. It was at Lance's, right? Yeah, we we were we were. Those were. were, were that was fun. That was Frostfest. That was that, yeah, that, that was a that fun was trip, man. That was. It's crazy to think that was 21 years ago. So we, um, I had, I had talked to Jack months before that trip, like maybe three, two, three months before the trip and asked him if he wanted to come film and he agreed to it. And then we, we, uh, I talked to, I talked to Morrow about it, you know, cause Morrow was setting that trip up, Chris yeah. Morrow. And, and, uh, I said, well, I'm happy to go, but I want to be able to bring a filmer and make a movie. And he's like, okay, cool. No worries. And then we get there and Sonny Miller and, and Dave Holmes here are also on the, on the boat filming. I'm like, fuck, I thought I had like, I thought I sorted this out where, we, you know, and, uh, but it was all fun. But we, you know, we had this idea that we were gonna just have one camera on the boat and make a film from that. And so it was a little of a surprise because Surfer was gonna shoot their own thing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, God! 
guy, Miller. <laughs> I, I Miller was I amazing, man. I couldn't, I couldn't eat sambal for like 10 years after that. I couldn't, I couldn't even smell it because remember the cook, the cook got sick and, and, and had to bail off the trip. So that the first mate had to cook all our food. I mean, it was pretty, it was a, and Machado's you, you, do you get seasick? I get seasick. I think Shane gets seasick. I think Machado gets seasick. <laughs> well, <laughs> how weird is that? You know, like, yeah, get me off the boat. I'll be fine if I get off the boat. It's just on the boat. Yikes. You know? Yeah, that's funny. I, um, I get seasick for the first day I'm on a boat. And then once I either throw up or get past that first day, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But it's just that first day of moving around, which it's, it's weird though. Cause I'm, if I go on a small boat, like a really small boat, I don't get seasick at all. I could be all out there all day long. Maybe if diesel fumes are in my face or something, but, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, but, how, uh, how did you, what'd you think of the Olympics? Olympics. That, um, a loaded question. I wish you were in it. No, it's not a loaded question much. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you know, look, it was, um, say what you want about the surf conditions or whatever. I'm glad they got surf. I was worried that there was going to be nothing. And, you know, to see there was going to be a typhoon, right? Swell right through that, that period of time. And, and I, I suppose the Olympics allowed them to pick their days too, based on conditions. I'm, I'm just assuming. Um, but there, there was a little confusion around that because even the guys in the contest were saying and, and girls were saying that the uh, the format changed during the Olympics. Like they thought it was gonna be one thing and then it was switched to a different format after round one. Um, that's what I heard, but that's kind of, you know, hearsay. Um, I thought it was interesting. I thought Barton was really good at the commentary to be color. And um, I didn't see the TV stuff there was some NBC stuff. I was going to actually go to Connecticut and do commentary with Joe Turpel. Um, if I didn't get the, the spot, you know, if a spot didn't open up for me. Um, so I was kind of waiting in the wings, trying to figure out which boards I'd be riding and get my mental competition head on um, in the, in that week or two lead up to it, you know, just waiting to see if I got a call that, you know, John or Kolohe were, either re-injured or chose not to serve or something like that. So I was just kind of on call for that, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't get my mind in the two places. Like I'm either going to do commentary or I'm going to surf. So I just went, well, I'll just surf. If it comes up, I'm not going to do commentary and yeah. um, I'll focus on that. If, and if the surfing, the surfing. Yeah. 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 And then if surfing doesn't happen, whatever, then it's fine. I'll just watch it. So I watched it the other night, stayed up late. Um, I thought, I thought, I was trying to put my head on like if I was just a, a person being exposed to a surf contest for the first time I had never watched. And I thought it was, um, man, it's hard. I'd like to talk to people who didn't, who don't surf, who watched it. But to me, it felt like a little bit compelling because you could see Barton was good enough about, about uh, talking about how the pace of a heat works and what you're looking for and how the guys spread out and then they'll use their priority in the last five or 10 minutes to kind of interfere on the other guy's game or whatever. And to me, I could, I could understand how even with not such great surf, it might be compelling for people who just like competition. Um, I, I think the people I expected to do well did well. Um, obviously I, I thought, I was expecting for Italo and Gabriel to sort of be number one and two, you know, that's just on yeah. paper. I thought Cano was going to be an outside shot at it. Um, I thought Julian and Owen had sort of an outside shot. Um, and uh, along with Kolohe, John, um, John did look still injured to me. He looked like he was protecting his knee. And, yeah, I mean um, and, you know, if there's a, if there's like any kryptonite whatsoever for John, it's, small mushy waves whereas like you know he's he excels at anything with speed or barrels or airs um so it's you know only in small mushy waves would i say he's susceptible and then the you know someone like italo is so fired up and gabriel 
find so much speed. They were, they, those two guys just seem to make crazy things happen on little tiny waves. And, <clears throat> and um, the fact that Felipe wasn't in on the team, I think was a crime. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's just unfortunate that he was geographically challenged and that's the yeah. only thing. I mean, he's from Brazil, so he couldn't be on the team. They should have a wild card situation, though. The best of the best should be there. I'm a little, I'm a little critical of that process. Um, I haven't read all the bylaws and what I'm allowed to talk about. But yeah, to be honest, I think the, the, yeah. the, the, the qualification process, um, you know, Fernando did his best to, uh, they, they said, okay, if surfing is going to be in, it needs a qualification process and you have to make that um, tangible so we understand it. And so, you know, obvious for him, they've got the ISA game. So that was the most easily tangible way as opposed to just going off the uh, world rankings. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, when I found out it was in the Olympics, I, I thought if I can make that and, and, you know, if I were to medal, I would probably retire at that time competitively. Yeah. Um, but the just next one being at Chopu, though, I think, I, <laughs> I, I mean, you'd like to, you're not going to retire before then, are you? I, I know everybody out there is going to be like, Dude. well, I, uh, yeah, you know that I'm place. not announcing my retirement right now, but I, yeah, no, I, don't I, myself, <laughs> I, I don't foresee myself, I don't foresee myself being a full-time competitor from, from here till then. But I also don't think that in three years, uh, that, I still think that in three years I could be competitive at Chopu for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Um, you know, it's just, it's just a tube skill and um, just, just putting time out there and stuff. And from small to big, you, you start to learn a lot of little tricks. And it's, too, it's, it's tube it's, skill and an in, and innate knowingness of, of the, the winning waves and uh, you're the best at it, best ever at it. So, you know, I hope you can, I hope you, you hope you're healthy and you're and you qualify for it. And I, I know I don't. I'm not just speaking as an American. I think I'm speaking as a global surfer. Oh, thanks. We all, we all dig watching you in that kind of surf. So. <laughs> thanks. I would love. You know, if I could, if I could, uh, yeah, if I could qualify for the Olympics at Chopo, I I would love to. That would that would be great. I just don't know if with the process you have to go through whether I'll be with I'll be in that conversation because you got to be on tour top two on tour from your country and then they start to fill it in with other countries and i don't know if between now and then i can find a relative in my last two generations from another country and switch my uh <laughs> switch out to like barbados or somewhere right right, right <laughs> um right. you know maybe i mean florida is its own country and to itself <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like they almost should have like the u.s team the Florida team, the Texas team, and the Hawaii team, because those, yeah, those are right. all kind of their own places. Yeah, they are, for sure. <laughs> different accents. Different. Yeah. <laughs> well, different a lot of people, you know, will, just on that, on that note, a lot of people have asked me what I thought about Hawaii having a team and uh, separate to the U.S. And I actually thought that would be really cool because of the um, lineage of the sport, because of surfing starting in Hawaii, when it was its own kingdom and um, and then it's spreading out across the world for there. I think it would be a really cool tip of the hat if Hawaii itself had its own team separate to the U S just for surfing. And I think it would be totally legit. Obviously you have enough talent. You just won the gold with Carissa um, from Hawaii and uh, obviously John, John and Seth Lonese and you know, all the other great surfers from Hawaii. It, it, there's, there's no, it's, I need a, 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 an uninjured John John in those conditions on the final day. Yeah. You know, is would I, I would really, really would have liked to watch that. Yeah, those yeah. conditions weren't unlike what John won his first tour event um, in, in, in Rio against Jack Freestone. Um, barreling, kind of windy, big air sections, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. the, only, the only bad thing about that final day, I wish the tide was high at the end of the day. I wish it was low in the morning and hot, getting higher because there were clearly better waves when it was high tide, like that one wave Michelle Barra's got, that nice barrel wave. Um, it could have been some nice double ups and tubes and, and a little less.
frustration yeah. by the surfers if, if it was higher tide. Let me ask, let me ask you, because I know you know so much about this. Uh, EPS were, I, I uh, was, was in low using uh, EPS boards. I know maybe Berez was, how much, how many other guys were using guys and girls using EPS versus um, uh, traditional polyurethane foam? Um, I don't know. I, in the games, I actually don't know that. Control. I had heard that he used to, that that Ilo was riding an EPS and uh, in that that's what he was riding and 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 to me I was kind of surprised because I thought those conditions bumpy and windy and just all those things I would think you the feeling of a of a polyurethane that 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 little bit heavier uh, you've ridden so many more EPS than I have I, I don't have a lot of experience with with EPS but. Um, would you have ridden an EPS board on, uh, or or a polyurethane? You know? I'm not sure. I um, whatever board felt best in those. You know, I would have probably gone out early that morning and tried a couple boards out. Would you see. have tried an right. EPS on the? And you would have you would have had your like how, how many different boards would you have uh, sort of tried on that morning? Because you know you need time and your energy and all those types of things. You're trying to figure yeah. out. What, you know, I, I probably would have had it narrowed down to two boards and just tried two different boards out. Um, <clears throat> but that final day was really, there was power, but it was really about the air. So, you know, the airs are scoring the biggest. But and, Ilo um, didn't, didn't win during doing airs in the final. Not in the end. No, not in the final. He didn't. But uh, I guess that didn't really present itself. But a lot of those other heats were just put away real quickly with a big air. You know, and and like Kanoa's air against um, Gabriel in the semis. Um, there's been a lot of debate that? about that. Did you watch? Did you watch that whole heat? Because I only watched. I only saw um, Gabriel's yeah. air wave, like a Gabriel's air wave and Kanoa's air wave, and I just went, "Well, Kanoa's was better," but I didn't see the whole heat. And a lot of Brazilians have reached out to me, asking me to speak up about it, and my thoughts, and blah blah, and. Um, you know, why did you think Kanoas was? Would, why did you think Kanoas was better? His air. Yeah. Oh, he just he just to me he covered more ground and free fell further and landed it so clean, and um, it, it wasn't the highest air in the world. I mean, it was pretty high, but he free fell after a complete full rotation all the way into the flats and just stuck it like grease that landing, yeah. and um, I like that. But I didn't see, um, I didn't see both of their both rides from each guy so i can't really speak on it i tried to watch it yesterday but i got caught up doing other things and i want to watch it back again but um yeah uh, well i, I, I did watch. I, i'll just say i just i did watch the michelle um gabrielle heat because uh chewy reina had mentioned to me oh what'd you think on that the scores and i went back and watched it and um i think if michelle had stayed in that barrel instead of doggy dooring it and come out clean and then just come out with speed and had a big carve or something he was probably gonna come close to matching gabriel's nine or whatever it was whatever the, that score was so that would even that. that heat up a little better yeah yeah i missed i missed the quarterfinals i didn't <clears throat> i didn't get to watch them um back to the canoa and, and gabriel heat i i thought that canoa had a wave his second wave well his first wave did he did a air re reverse and and if you really look at the section the, the way the wave was going like this and instead of going up here and going up in there and going like up like that which i think that's where the real difficult like really really difficult to do a turn when the rut right up in here so he went past that yeah. point and then he flew out here and did an air reverse didn't land it that cleanly and then did um and then his and then did another turn but the other turn was a real um a style, a real contest looking type of turn so you get a that seven Kanoa? Kanoa, yeah they got a 7.7 .7 or something a point i suppose not even a point less than gabriel's full you know gabriel's first way which was a backside air um uh, where he came almost all the way around, I would say, and then he landed sort of in the turbulence, pulled it really clean. It was stylish too. And I look at yeah. like 
Kanoa's air, and I didn't think his air was very stylish. I thought it was sort of flat. I, you know, like if you think about like some of those ones that Felipe like sort of, sort of tweaks the board and throws the fins at the beach and and gets a twist yeah. into it and stuff. I I think those have got so much more. Um, they're so much more like uh, they're like a, I don't know. They just have so much more. I I didn't think it was a point like is nearly a point better than Gabriel's. So I did think he landed it perfectly. I did think it was pretty high. And I just, it was just kind of like, I, you know, sometimes I just watch and I sometimes go, oh, that's the score for sure. And then other times I watch and I go, hmm, that's pretty good, but I don't know. And yeah. I mean, I, but that's a tough call for the judge, but I felt like it was a little bit overscored, but that's my that's that's based on that i didn't think it was super stylish either you know uh -huh. um, and he grabbed you know i don't know you know like that but that's me yeah yeah somebody else asked me what's your thought on julian and gabriel's feet um i did watch that one and i thought that um gave one for fair and square i was actually i was actually really kind of pulling for julian um during this past week, you know, because he's announced that he's kind of maybe retiring or taking time off or not going to finish the tour out this year. And I just thought it'd be a pretty cool story if Julian went on to win in, in that situation. I thought, I, thought a, I thought a cool final would be um, uh, Julian against Kanoa being on the Japanese team. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, it's uh, – I still – Anyway, I, 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 I didn't – I'm going to say something that um, I just think Kanoa needs to surf more radically. I, I just, it's not that, I mean, he's, he's very good. I'm, I'm being hyper, hyper critical, but I just think he needs to learn how to place his board in more critical positions and be, and get more leverage because he, to me, he looked really exposed. Anytime he got, he got away from the power, he just, he just, uh, you know, he, he lost, um, lost speed and things like that. But that's, um, I mean, I'm being hyper, hyper critical, but I think yeah. he needs to learn how to surf more radical basically to, to take it to the, to take it to the, to Italo. I think Italo surfs is super radical and I, I love the way he surfs. Yeah. I, I love where he positions his board and how, um, his, how, how much he goes on full attack. He, you know, he's going into a section. Doesn't look like he's going to hold back at all. Um, and I think to beat him, you've just got to surf more. You've got to surf as radical or more radical than him to be the best. You know, and I, I, I think Kano's got the capability if he can get better technically. You know? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I see um, Kanoa surf, and he's so fast, and he has a lot of variety, and he's so quick at at linking one thing to another the combos are he's so good with um I, if i was going to get critical i think sometimes he he goes a little bit flat on his turns and maybe yeah. that's what you're talking about, um, talking about. And yeah yeah and um and it it looks radical but it's not a power thing maybe it's but, a critical it's oh. critical it's being able to hold the speed in a critical position with a with in a in a very um in a very very yeah. hard hard place to do a turn you know um you would you would you would know this stuff you do them and um yeah it's it's a it's a way the it's the way the body is the way the body positions the attack uh, yeah. i think <clears throat> i think both felipe and Ilo are full attack guys and um and and gabriel looks a little bit more calculated to me than Italo and Felipe, and that's why I, I like um, yeah. Felipe a little more than I want. I, I appreciate Gabriel surfing a lot, but, you know. I... Yeah. Yeah, it's a funny one. I, um, I think Gabriel is sort of technically as sound as anyone's ever been. Yeah, he, no. He I, can I do everything. I, he I can barrel it. ride. He can carve. He can, you know, there's nothing. He can ride shitty waves. He's proven yeah. to be good in big barrels, like. He's won everywhere. He's figured out how to win everywhere. And I think that's, there's a thing about surfing where there's like the sport side of surfing and there's the artistic side of surfing and, and surfing started more as like a nature experience and, and being 
being sort of one with the energy, right? And and that yeah. turned in, I guess that turned into more of like an artistic personal endeavor um, that you just leave out there as opposed to like a contest. So 99.9% .9 of people are never going to compete when they surf. So in some ways it it either irks people or doesn't relate to them or it's not interesting to them. I think Gabriel's about as good a contest surfer as there ever will be. Um, he can just make, he can go out and he can formulate a plan to, to beat anyone. And um, I think that's pretty amazing. And he has the skill to do it. And <clears throat> what he generally will do is he'll go out and he'll real quickly catch a bunch of waves and get ahead of you. And then he puts pressure on you and then you crumble. And the, the only times you really see him uh, maybe get, I wouldn't say dominated, but beaten in a heat is when he has to, he's forced to not take a lot of waves. When, if somebody gets ahead of him and the time gets to a certain position and he has to sit and just hope the ocean gives him something to work with, that's when, um, that's the only time he's susceptible, you know. To, I to saw lose what it. about that heat with Connor at Pipe? Connor was way ahead of him. I thought Connor missed a little opportunity and made some tactical errors, but like he was it's totally way good. Out ahead. Yeah. That yeah. was insane. The waves came right to, to right right to Gabriel and he just he performed insane. Yeah. You know, like, I remember <laughs> watching that heat and I was just like there was there was one wave, I forget if um I forget if Connor took this one wave. Or just lost his priority, I forget what. And right then, I was just like, oh, my God. You could – literally, I could feel it in my bones. Like, the the energy just changed, and Gabriel's going to win this thing. And, <laughs> and he just did everything. He boom, 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 and he didn't make a wrong decision. And, you know, it, it's it's only when you make that guy think that he can make a, a mistake. If he's not thinking, if he's just, like – if he's blacking out and just catching a bunch of waves, he's got you. He's got you done. You know. Do you on that point? Do you think his his uh, bronze the bronze matchup with um, Owen? Do you think the wind was out of his sails a bit, and that? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. It just he looked a little bit defeated overall. Body, his 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 sort of just the way he looked inside his skin. I think he was probably so let down he didn't have that chance for that gold already. That it's emotional. It seems emotional for Gabriel. Um, I mean, for you, for me, for like a lot of us, it's really uh, uh, Andy Irons, you know, like a lot of. Well, it's, yeah, it's emotional. For not If it's not emotional for you, you shouldn't probably be doing it. You know, like. But you find that that emotional side of it is where you go in and you can do things that maybe you didn't even know you could do. Mm. <laughs> You've done some stuff that that's like, I mean, you must be like, you know. I've I've had. I've had things turn in my favor where I was like, did that really just happen? <laughs> you know, I mean, probably the most obvious one was surfing against Timmy Reyes, who I, I just played golf with Timmy a couple of days ago. Um, I surfed against Timmy in the semifinals yeah. in, at, in 2008 and he had me comboed and I got a nine, five on the left and a 10 on the right in 90 seconds. And I was like, Whoa, okay. That just happened. <laughs> you know, you know, he was comboed. And, uh, Bruce. Dude, the first time I surfed against you, I had you on the ropes and you got a 10. I was like, what? That shit happens, man. You got to watch I know, I know. <laughs> I was like, what? There's no way he's going to beat me. I'm not letting that no. happen. <laughs> I, was telling the, I was telling this story the other day of um, me and you ha had a heat when I was 18. I was just about to go home and start my senior year at high school. And uh, I, I stayed and surfed. Because I did well at um, Lockenau, right? I got third and Tom won. And then they had that Sued West Surf Trophy, and it was an extra like 15 or 20 grand for the best in the three events. And so I remember uh, telling my mom, oh, I was going to miss the first week of school if I do well in Hasegor. So if I go to Hasegor and I can get like a, you know, a, a fifth or better, then I'm in for maybe making all this money on this Sued West Trophy. And um, I, I ended up with you in the round of 17. And uh, um, it was at Hossegor, and it was kind of getting highish tide. And it was a little bit flat. And there was kind of like a, a channel on the left side of the peak, but it was, it was pretty much all right, and we were surfing away from that channel. <clears throat> and um, we get down to the end of the heat, and you're winning, and I need about a 5-5, five, five, I think, to beat you. And uh, 
you have priority and there's like two minutes left or 90 seconds or something. And this wave comes and I'm like, Oh my God, he's too far out. And it's the best wave I've seen in the heat. And so we're paddling and I catch it and you miss it. And now I've, you've used your priority and you've missed the wave and I need a five, five. And all I'm like, all I got to do is ride this wave. And I beat Brad Gerlach. And I, as I'm bottom turning, I hear you go, fuck. Super loud. <laughs> <laughs> and I did a bottom turn and a backwash kind of hit me and I kind of started laughing and I fell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so good. <laughs> uh, I remember, the, I remember when I drew you, it was like half a foot or one foot. And I was like, of course, I got to draw Kelly Sander when it's a half a foot. Like, God. Why couldn't it be good? <laughs> and our heat was like the last heat of the day. And by and the wave started out super small and then just grew throughout the day. And by the time our heat was out there, it was like glassy and like the waves looked incredible. I was like, yes, I was so psyched. And um, I just wasn't strategic enough to, I just went balls to the wall. I love surfing against you because I was like, I'm just going to go for it as much as I possibly can go for it. And it won't matter whether I win or I lose, this is just be super fun, you know? So, uh, Do you remember I, I, we had in, um, at Grand Plage in Biarritz. And then oh we, yeah. One more, I was like, Oh man, he's got this too. It's small. He's going to beat me on this one. Like, ah, oh. like, so, yeah. So you I wish you were coaching me <laughs> you way over in the corner. And I surf more towards the center of the beach. I don't know if you remember this. And that was one of his top three rides, right? And you had five judges. What? There's a different scoring system then, you know, because I remember you could get like a hundred points if you had a really good heat. You got a hundred points, right? Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember how that worked, but a hundred points is like three seven fives, something like that. Anyways, um, I had you beat in the heat, and it was coming down to the end, and that was when the priority rule used to be: if you're a mile down the beach and you ride that same swell, you get an interference. Remember that? Yeah, I got, it happened to me. Yeah, and uh, so it almost happened in that heat too, but I was nice because <laughs> I, I was already ahead of you. And this wave came and f the way that it hit the beach, you took off and went right before the swell ever got to me and I had priority. Yeah. And looking at it, I'm like, I can just go and give them interference, but I, like, I'm already winning the heat and that would be a real dick move. But oh. I... I can't do it. I can't do no, it. In the, in the, but in the, in, that, in the contest before that one, I was up against Stuart Bedford Brown. Yeah. At Hossegor. At Hossegor. And I got a wave. At that channel, I remember that. I got a wave that was like not even connected to his wave. And they gave me a priority interference. It was like, I, it, and by the time, and then when we got to Grand Plage or whatever, and I got you in my heat, I was already emotionally, I'd broken up my girlfriend. I just was not in this. I was not in the space of like, I was like, I need, I really needed a coach to be like, here, here's a lifesaver, Brad. Like, you know, like we need to, you know, there's only three months left and you can win the world title here, dude. Like, yeah. you know, let's just, let's just focus in and do what you do. But, you know, I needed that, you know, but like, yeah, it was a, that was a stupid rule. I'm glad they don't do that anymore. You know, what, the worst yeah. one I ever Carole. saw was Tom Carroll at Pipe with Todd Holland. That was the worst one ever. I got I got the same thing happen to me in 92, the first year I won that title. We get to Japan, and <clears throat> I'm surfing as Sonny, <clears throat> and he has priority, and we're both paddling for about a one-foot wave. I actually just saw this on video a couple months ago. We're both paddling for a wave, and he stands up super quick, and I'm, like, on my last stroke pulling back as he stands up. And you know the rule used to be if you even take a stroke while that guy's getting to his feet, you get interference. Yeah. There's no logic behind it other yeah. than like some kind of like, I don't know if, I don't know who came up with that rule, if it was Ian and PT and the NSSA days or what. Some, there was like, because the, the reason I bring those guys up is because they were really technical, right? And they, and, and Ian helped start the ASP. But, um, uh, so, so, yeah, so Sonny paddles, he stands up real quick. I get the interference. He stands up and he goes like this to the judge and he doesn't even try to ride the wave. He just goes, points at me like that's interference. And it's top, it's top three rides. And instantly they call an interference on me. And I, I think I had like a nine and an eight 
I ended up with two nines in the heat and Sonny had like three sevens or a couple of three sixes. And I just barely lost to him. I was so mad. And then, um, you know, cause I could almost, I think I, I think I could have tied the world title up at that event. Cause then we went to, to Brazil the next week or two weeks later. And, um, and so I remember just like freaking out. It was the first time, maybe the only time I ever rushed the judges stand and started punching the door. <laughs> so mad. <laughs> It was the same contest where Kaipo Hakias chased down Shane Herring and Shane had to run away from him hiding in his hotel because they had some interference thing too or whatever. Um, were, you, but were, you I'm, with, I'm a, were you hanging with maybe, Doug Silva because he loved to do that? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but Sonny, ironically, Sonny had to come calm me down after he beat me. Oh, it was funny. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, I Quite, guess, you know... One of the it wasn't quite, I, as, it wasn't quite as bad as you and Pat Laura. Oh man, that was just funny. That was just a thing. That was just that was just that, was, that well, that was the same year too, you know. But that um, I I was gonna say that I, I I hadn't ever really thought about it, and then I recently just thought about it. Like if I would have stayed on tour, uh, I I I feel like I really loved when you came on. When you first came on tour, I was, I was so stoked you were on there because I love the way you surf. And I was like, fuck, someone who's not going to be a contest machine, someone who's going to just like, you know, do crazy surfing. And, and, and then I just, I really need, I, I quit. And, um, and I think, man, if I didn't quit, I, maybe, maybe I would have had like a, some really fun heats with you, you know, just because I had a mental thing where I, where when I surfed against somebody I thought I surfed better than, I was like, I'd be worried that I was going to lose to them. And then if I surfed against somebody who I thought was better than me, I was, I would be like, great, I'm just going to go ham. And that sort of let me open up. There's a total mentality to for sure. Cause I've on a percentage basis, I've probably lost more heats to, to guys I should have beaten like wild cards than against, um, against guys, my contemporaries, you know, I'd have a heat with Mick and, I would not have a nerve in my body, like not nervous to try stuff, not nervous to make decisions. Whereas like, if you feel like you're against someone you should beat, you try to protect it before you even get a lead and you, you surf defensively or you compete defensively. So, you know, there's, yeah, there's, no, it doesn't work. It's like, you're, cause yeah. you're thinking of the, you knowing what I know now is you're thinking of the future and you're thinking of the worst case scenario and, 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 and you need to wipe that from you and just think about and be in the moment, you know, and just be like, it's okay. Just be in the moment, you know, yeah. and, and, and chances are you're going to win, you know, and, and you not think about the negative and not think about what could happen or all this stuff. And then being, and being so young and not having like not traveling with somebody that I could trust and could talk with and, you know, tell somebody like be vulnerable and be like, man, I don't, I, I, I'm nervous. And you know, you can really walk up to like, <laughs> couldn't really walk up to Hoyo and say like, I'm nervous. He'd be like, fuck, just fucking suck it up, man. Fucking get out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you just look at me and go, what for? You know? <laughs> just stall on my. And oh yeah, right. Yeah, no, I can't be nervous. You know, and and I think, <laughs> um. I, I, uh, do you have, uh, one of the things that I, I think you're really good at is impressions. And, um, <laughs> I think when we first met, we were, we started on impressions and, um, everybody always asked me to do my Aki impressions. Do you have an, do you have an Aki impression? <laughs> yeah. I don't mean like, oh. <laughs> yeah, he, I, 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 I've often told this one story where, um, when I was like 14, the movie Beyond Break, Beyond uh, Blazing Boards came out, Chris Bystrom film, Hoodoo Gurus and Ganga Jang and that whole soundtrack. And Keckley was on tour and he used to film all around the world and bring home the videos. Like, I love the videos from Australia. He'd come home with three, four hours of video from contests and free surfs and traveling up the coast and kangaroos and koalas. You know, it was like so exciting for me as a kid going, well, I'm going to go there one day. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'd sit there. Sometimes he'd sit me in front of his TV and just go, okay, push play and tell me when you're done. And I'd watch his videos, him and Charlie Kuhn. Anyway, so he was, he was um, in Australia for that, that season that that movie was made. And there was a um, surfers against nuclear destruction contest up in Mwilumba or somewhere. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. And, 
uh, not sorry, not Mullumba. Where was it? Uh, way up north somewhere. Anyways, Malula, um, yeah. So Aki ends up. It didn't show the context of it in the in the movie, but he does this air reverse, not an air reverse, but he does this air and he grabs a rail. I think he grabs slob maybe, and he lands backwards and he rides out. And it was, I find I found out later on. I talked to Keck about that, and Keck goes, "Oh, that was in a." He goes, "That was in the expression session." He goes, "I just paddled in." He's like, "What was I? What was I going to do?" Because at the time, that was like the most radical air that maybe had ever been done, you know, and yeah. And so I, I told Aki that story. I'm like, oh, I told Keck that's, you know, I asked Keck about that. And he told me how you guys were in a free, you know, an expression session. And, and he told me all after I saw that air of Aki's, I just paddled in. And he goes, yeah, mate, they all paddled in. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, it was like, I was I, there. I was, I was at that contest. It was the Billabong Surf into Summer 1984. It was my first trip to Australia. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was, um, uh, I had a black surfboard, actually. And um, I remember, um, I remember uh, meeting Bruce Lee, and he's like, Oh, you're that cat that, that as the black gourd, you know, like, he was like, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, I got a, I had such good time. I was with uh, Brett Hodge, Dave Kennedy, uh, and Bruce Lee. And, um, and I remember, uh, I remember Aki doing that, and I was like, "Wow, that was so radical!" And um, my, my my little story with 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 Aki, I have so many, but um, one of the things was Doc, Aki was on that Dancing with the Stars thing. And um, did you happen to see that? Yeah, I saw it. But the one day I was out surfing, <laughs> at, um, <laughs> I was surfing at Snapper one day. It, and uh, I knew it was going on. Like Aki was supposed to be on TV the next night, so I like mentioned it to me. He's all, mate. I've been I've been trying to go to practice, but like, the way has been that good. I haven't been able to go practice, mate. I'm gonna be bad. And he was like so nervous, but he was, he couldn't get out of the water. He was doing like eight hour days, and he's supposed to be doing his dance routines. That's a that that is a cool tie to the story of you know because I watched him on there. He wasn't very good. And the, um, and, you know, <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, how he could be so good at serving and not be good at dancing, but, you know, he wasn't. And then um, the guy, you know, he, they came up for review and the guy's like, you know, Mark, you got like two left feet, you know, or whatever, you know, you're not, you're not good. It's good that you're really good at surfing, but, you know, yeah, stick to surfing, you know, like, <laughs> or whatever, right? And yeah. you could see on Aki's face, he wasn't like, "Yeah, you're right. I, I, I blew. I, I suck or whatever." He was, <laughs> he, he was looking at the guy like, like, he, like you could see he was hurt. And I was like, "Whoa, he's like, he's pretty bummed," you know. And I was like, "How could, how could he think that? How could he think that <laughs> he, he was? I don't know. How could he think he was dancing well?" And I, um, he was kind of there letting the girl dance <laughs> i mean I, I i thought it was rad that he did it he was he's so entertaining even if he doesn't dance good he's super fun to watch you know what i mean like he's just such an entertaining person and um and then i i saw him and so i saw him in the water and i was like and i said to him i said hey um i go man what a what a bummer like what a bummer you didn't like advance in the in the dancing and i thought he was gonna go yeah i suck at it and he goes he goes yeah, you know, I, I mean, the guy was like really telling me I was doing well and everything behind, and and I, yeah, and then when they dropped in on me, I was, you know, I was like, I couldn't believe it, eh? And I just thought I was like, oh my god, you know, like, how is he, you know, like that? That was kind of, and I think, you know, here, you know, he doesn't like me imitating him. He doesn't like anybody imitating him. You know what I mean? And and so I hey, I, kind I of feel his pain because when I when I watch Tyler Allen's videos, I'm like, oh shit, do I talk like that? <laughs> oh, oh, when he when he imitates you? <laughs> when Tyler Allen imitates me, I'm like, oh no, he's good. He's good. Uh, he does a pretty good job of, of it. Yeah, yeah. But um, I look at you know what I do? I look at my wave key and I think, oh my god, someone's gonna. So I'm just gonna. I I told Sterling because Sterling's coming back from an injury. I'm like, hey, I'll I'll help you. You know, you want to 
I'll take you through some wave camo. You're going to have a lot of material on being able to take me. <laughs> but, yeah, well, the best person I ever saw imitate Aki was Shane Herring. And so I pretty much really? copy Shane's version of Aki. Yeah, I remember Shane, like Shane goes, Shane did this thing. He did this thing where he like, he, he, he went, and he looked off and he, he was like, yeah, well, I just, <laughs> like he did this, like the way he did his face, he tucked his hair behind his ear and did his whole, like rolled his eyes and everything. I was like, oh my God, it was amazing, you know? So anyway, uh, the uh, super fun, super fun talking with you. Got any questions for me? <laughs> Where are you? You're on the Goldie now, right? Full time? Yeah. Yeah, we moved. You enjoying we it? Moved, uh, pardon me. You liking it up there better, surf wise and stuff? Not, not so much surf wise. Uh, I missed all the kind of good surf because uh, we were moving and all this during that time. Um, but what I really like is that my kids, uh, we can we can play around in the water up here and it's warm and um, and I got a lot of friends up here and. And if, if I'm getting, if I get a, a little bit of a surf, that's cool. But the number one thing is just, you know, the happiness of my wife and, and my kids to, to be in a, a warmer environment. Because we're kind of stuck wherever we live up here. We're kind of stuck in where we live for now. And so, yeah. Yeah. When huh. are you coming back? You're getting, it sounds like you're getting soft in your old age. You know, you're thinking of other people first and stuff like that. Uh, so soft, so soft. It's the only way to be because people. The the worst is if you go the opposite direction and you get a direction and you get harder. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, huh? When are you coming yeah. back? Shit, I don't know. I don't know when they'll let me back in the country. Um, next year, I guess, sometime. It would have been. It would have been a nice time. Did you get some of that Kira last week? It wasn't last week. It was like a couple of weeks okay. ago or whatever. I missed couple it. Weeks, yeah. um, that was right yeah. when eighty, right when about 85 boxes showed up on our lawn and I was in the middle of the move and um, I had to get it. I had to get stuff organized before, um, before all our artwork and electronics, you know, got nailed by the rain. And I just, yeah, I just kind of was, yeah, it's two kids under five full, full time. <laughs> got to make sure everybody's, uh, comfortable and you know can't I can't put myself first you know so uh, I missed it yeah but it's all right yeah nobody feels bad for me I've had enough good waves in my life <laughs> <laughs> you know who's a you know who's a real surf junkie up there on the Gold Coast is Shane Haran Shane's just every day all day Shane is why we moved here we got, Shane had a buddy who had a friend because it's really hard to get a place. So through Shane, he helped us get our get our place. So yeah, oh, nice. I love Shane, I love Shane, and Epic. yeah, totally. I'm I, um, I'm looking forward for you to come back. Go surfing. Yeah, I can't wait. Me. We gotta hang. I I had a I was hanging out with Shane a couple of years ago, quite a bit, and I had dinner at his house. This is going back about six years now, and um, we're just talking about fins. We went in his garage, and he showed me a bunch of his single fins, and he hand foils things, and. You know, he's one of the only guys in the world I know has more fins in his garage than I do. And, um, but he's ridden every one of them. It's really I'll interesting. Have to come to my garage. I got a lot of fins, dude. Yeah. Well, we started, I got talking about, we started talking about equipment back when everything went from, you know, singles to twins to thrusters. And then at, at one time you had all three of those boards on tour, right? Guys riding, Shane's on the singles, Dane and MR on twins. Uh, other guys are going to thrusters at the early 80s. And he, he said to me, he said, I wish I had um, gone to the thruster at that time. Because he, he realized that it cost him, uh, you know, probably at least one world title, maybe two or three. Um, but he said he was just so stubborn about, about it. And he would not conform. I, was, I, I, I talked to him about it at the time. And I would tell him, I, you know, I'm a bit, I'm a, I'm a, I, uh, I'm not afraid to speak and, and tell, and tell people my opinion. Uh, as, sometimes it's unsolicited. <laughs> I learned like not to do that as, and, and wait to see if the person was open and receptive. But I, 
but with Shane, he was like my hero. I, and I said, dude, you, you, you should be riding these boards if I'm, you know, we're all riding here. Like, you know, like you're, and I also, I also told him, I'm like, you gotta, you gotta like extend your body more. You're, you're staying too squatty for too long. He, he remembers it. He remembers me. I mean, I said it in a nice way. I didn't say it like yeah. that. I also told Sean Thompson, I'm like, you're doing too many, you're doing too many wiggles. You know, like you're, you're wiggling too much. Like you have any, and Sean said to me, I'm all, you know, if you just went from turn to turn to turn, you're going to score higher. And Sean was like, I have to do those. Otherwise I'll slow down. I was like, okay. But like, <laughs> I'm sure I just, think back and think like, yeah, they must have looked at me like, shut up, Grom. But I, it was coming from a good place, you know, and um, yeah. I do remember talking with Shane about it, and I wish that he moved on to, uh, to a thruster. Uh, but, but anyway, he's such a, he's such a beautiful guy. He's such a, he's such a passionate guy about surfing, positive, upbeat, uh, super fun. Yeah, I, I talked him into making himself a twin fin last year, so. He's been riding a twin fin a little bit. It's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would, I would love to have seen him on a twin fin in the early '80s. Shane was he, because of that low center of gravity, you know. So how about you? How about, how about how about you? How come? Uh, do you think that some of these guys should be on tour at certain locations? Could be riding twin fins to their advantage. I think there's certain waves that you can. Um, I think waves that where you can hold more speed. You know, I keep thinking that bells would be a really good place for one if you had the right you know combination of the rocker and the fins and all that stuff um because there's such a flat section between the outside and the inside and just that link holding that retaining that speed and also bells is such a flat face even even on the, the best of days it's still a pretty flat face where you, the bottom of the wave is about two-thirds down the wave and then there's this slope that you can't really use way out in the front of it and um so i keep thinking that if a twin fin or a four fin of some sort just because they're just simply faster down the line less resistance through that middle part of the board and everything uh, yeah. with that middle fin yeah um so i th i think they are potentially viable i think you have that one that's narrow enough in the tail that looks like you're shredding instead of like a wiggly back end like shane's boards were all laser zap real they all look like that you know they're like yeah. wide wide in the tail like a teardrop kind of thing and, you know, there'd be 23 inches wide, and that wide point was two feet from the tail, and the tail but he won. But he won bells, too. So He did, yeah, but that was at Rincon, right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. But some yeah. of the heats would have been at, or might have been in the bowl. Um, uh, do, you, do, you think, do you think that, like, what's really wonderful about the, the re uh, the resurgence of the twin fin is that it's got, it's come on with the modern rockers and the modern and all the modern, I mean, you got, you, you, you got a bunch from Mike Wu over there. He's taking me pretty, and you got Akila, uh, who's a second generation shaper, um, longtime friend of ours. Must be yeah. exciting being on the forefront of that and seeing what you can do with the rockers and where you place the fins and so much different than the twin fins. Of when when people left the twin fins in the eighties, Derek Hind is doing this whole. Do you know what Derek's doing? He's doing a whole. Um, do you know what Derek's doing? I have no idea what Derek's doing. No. He's doing this I whole thing. It's really fascinating. He's doing this whole thing on uh, surfboards that he remembers he had like you know magic surfboards. He's going back there and reshaping them uh, with a, a sense that he left something there. And that because of back in the day, he would get it, he'd have to return them. And that the board, that his, in his mind, the performance wasn't done on that surfboard. And yeah. It's, 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 and you probably have like surfboards that over the years that would have, you're like, man, I, I, I want that element of that surfboard mixed with this element of this, you know, like that board wasn't finished. I wasn't finished right. Now I'm better surfer than I was. Maybe I should go back there and see what I feel to learn. There's so much there. It's fascinating, actually. Mm. Yeah, I do wish there were some of the old boards that <clears throat> I sold or got rid of. I spent, for me, I wish I could have my first surfboard I ever had back. I have no idea where it is or how to find it or if it exists. It might have gone in the trash eventually after being sunburned under someone's house for years. But it, it, that first board, you know, but we didn't have the money for yeah. us to keep our surf for surfboards so we had to sell that to get another one and 
that went yeah. on for probably the first four years that I was riding hard boards. So a lot of my early boards were always sold back or given back, traded yeah. in. And um, but I was thinking about yesterday how I'm, I might just go plug in because I'm about to die. I was thinking about how um, how when we were Groms, you'd get a board and uh, that board, you just had to make that board work. Right. And yeah. Yeah. So the, the, and we didn't have repeatable rockers and yeah. we didn't have good blanks. The blanks went right for the size of boards I was riding and stuff. Yeah. So you, you had to make the board work. So you, you had to figure out these different things about the design, like what there might be a certain maneuver or place on the wave they would be really great at. And there's something else maybe you'd avoid. And then you'd find that in the next board if it was different. And, um, Do you think that in that you learned how to soften yourself because you can't force I, I have a I had a board a thruster, one of the first thrusters, it was made by Sunset Surfboards. Um and I was sixteen and it, it was waterlogged and I had a giant piece of duct tape on it and I remember and this is maybe in some of the poorer countries with surfing like you know brazil for instance you know Italy learning to surf on on an sv lid basically and just some of the not being able to get these new boards jamaica just lots of different places but you like i my i was bombed on my board and then the op came to town and there was shane and mr and i was in the water with all my heroes all of a sudden my board started working really good again <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I just, I just figured out like I have to make it work, and, and there's a certain amount of intelligence you gain from riding that uh, inferior, um, inferior equipment maybe for a little while in your in your, in your pro progression. Yeah, well, Derek Hine used to talk about that everyone should take like a six five with them on tour. And in their practice surf ride the six five and then go in their heat and speed up on the five ten or six oh. You feel like you're going twice as fast. You know, it just gives you that sense that oh I'm I'm flying on this wave. And yeah. I think it's really good to ride other boards and learn what they do. There's some guys who are so heavy in one area of their surfing that it would be good for them to either ride a twin fin or ride a single fin or you know, just ride something different to offset their sort of imbalance in their approach. You know, and yeah. sometimes I find that for myself and I think, oh, I need to go and ride something that'll balance me out a little bit, you know. I noticed with my own technique that I, I used to, um, and probably still do, uh, I lean over one direction in the other direction. And moving from, a, moving from a, I think you can get away with that when you're riding a three fin, but when you start riding twin fins or single fins, they, they can slide out on you if you don't stay right over the top of the board. And that, the person that I see that stays over his surfboard um, in the, is Tommy Curran. And um, and then, you know, I, I think that's what both Italo and, and Gabriel do, their posture, the way that their head's over the board. They're, like, really over the board almost all the time. Yeah, they're um, really 50-50 on their weight, it seems like, compared mm -hmm. to other generations. Obviously, Tom was – Carol was very forward. Um, very much into this in, in, into like getting he'd walk way up the board and then when he turns it's all stomp on the back foot so it's it's like um, it's yep. that, that balance is going much further forward and then backwards whereas those guys seem to be so upright almost like sometimes they almost look like a snowboard stance or something you know uh, yeah yeah, and, can, and, and then that's where you can start getting into the style part of it and, and looking at where you know Certain, certain turns are super stylish, other turns are not so stylish. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's, uh, there's a, to me, whenever, I'd say whenever Inlo or, or Gabriel don't look stylish, I think they look boxy and they mm. don't, they, they don't soften. And, and I, I talk about this a lot in Wave Key about softening down so that you can go down close to the surfboard. Like a, if you think about like a bodyboarder can make the latest drop ever because they're so close to the surfboard. They have so much control. The center of their mass is so close to the bodyboard. So if you can get your body yeah. down close to the surfboard prior to the turn or so that you don't fall, you know, there's just yeah. all this, you know. And, and then you got different anatomies. Gabriel's taller, you know, it was shorter, you know. Um, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty fascinating stuff, really. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think at one point I was talking about before was we were mentioning about, uh, I was talking about Medina and his comp competition ability. You, you know, he's, he's been in almost every final that's happened this year. It's crazy. This day and age, that's a pretty crazy stat. Um, and, and you, Italo's threatening at everyone also. Um, yeah. I feel like Felipe is kind of the sleeper. You know, he hasn't been the focus of this year. He didn't make the Olympic team. Um, he, ha you know, he's not ranked quite as, I think he's in third or fourth, but he, he just seemed like he was a little slower getting out of the gates this year. And, um, I think going into the trestles that probably suits him really well. But uh, I, I think, uh, getting back to that point though, like Medina is so interesting to watch surf heats. Um, and I think that's where he does his best surfing from what I, from what I see. Um, I don't when I saw him as like a 15 year old, we never see any videos of him surfing outside of heats. I, I suppose. Well, that's a, that was kind of the point I'm going to get at is that like John, John, everyone watches John's movies, you know, it's, it's like, John's exciting to watch in heats. And when the waves are great, obviously he does things that other people can't do the way he barrel rides and the, the air combos he makes and stuff. But the, uh, you know, the full time filming he has with Eric Knudsen and, they're they're constantly working on creating an art piece you know a moving art piece and yeah so if you're gonna watch a surf film you're you're um you know you're probably gonna watch a, a john john film at this point and if you're gonna watch somebody who's a master of surfing heats it's definitely gabriel and it's just you know it's just a kind of a different skill but in saying that i think i think um th as far as technically skill for skill they're both like right on par with each other yeah yeah, I, I, I would say that the um, what was what I found what I really, really liked was John's watching John serve at Little Merriweather. I thought he served super good. I thought he really learned. I thought he learned how to surf little waves very good. And he made like a he made like a really a little error. And that and, you know, in serving, if you make a little error, a little timing error. You, it can just domino in the, and you just can't catch, you just can't, you can't seem to catch up. Um, it was really a really small, like subtle thing that I, I, can, I can point out to you basically. Um, but I need the wave in front of us to, to show, but I love the way he was moving his board, that, that stuff he's doing with um, uh, Justin at the dark arts or whatever he's doing with the flex and all the, his little wave surfings look really alive at uh, Mary at Merriweather. Yeah, I think his I think his uh, small wave boards look much better in recent years, last couple of years. Um, <clears throat> I think he's really put time into working on that. You know, it's just yeah. you just got to have that on tour. And yeah. being from Hawaii, it's not something that you. It's not like you want to go and practice at Miley Point or so, You know, like a flat wave. Yeah. Like Sonny, Sonny grew up surfing Miley and Makaha. So Sonny was always really good in those kind of mushier waves. He could, but he's he could a, tick -tack he's another, and find But he was another guy who never leaned over. And when he did lean over, he, 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 it was real obvious. His, that layback snap card thing of his is just, man, that thing is so awesome to watch. I, I rewatched that a lot. I love the way he does that turn. That was, that thing is just, uh, you know, that thing is just so Man, whenever I see it, I I, I just on the inside go, yes, you know. Um, yeah. Sonny's backhand cut back to off the top was like I always thought that was one of the best moves in surfing, like through the nineties. He he had that crazy like he would just squat low and just put all that power and just release it back into the lip. So fun and the to watch. Snap, and his backside snap is really good too. Uh, yeah. I I'm I'm uh, I'm so stuck to to chat with you buddy i miss you uh you know jump i feel like we didn't call talk me i know we text and I, we, we talk and uh, stuff and, and i'm stoked to yeah. stay in touch with you so yeah me too i feel like i feel like this conversation in too far off just our regular phone call yeah <laughs> you know? yeah we'd still be and talking about this stuff people, i think it's fun for people to to listen in and, and us talk about the higher and more critical things in surfing and just our opinions and and I mean, we've just, one of the things I feel connected with you is you have such a good memory. Um, I've got a really good memory and especially for things that really stick out and influence us, you know, and um, 
so many surfers have been um, so influenced me a lot and I've learned from you maybe one of the biggest ones I, I, I watched you surf a lot you know studied and mm. still learn and yeah so oh thanks Brad uh, yeah buddy I, I, one last thing I was going to say I really want to see current I want to see a whole section of current riding a good twin fin yeah yeah, I remember when he rode a twin fin. He was riding a twin fin when I was 15, and I was at a, you know, and as to say, he was 16 and a half. He was like a year and a half older than me, and I remember he was riding twin fins. And then he moved to a thruster before he went pro. Mm. Oh, what off. did you, real quick, what did you think about, I mean, I know the answer, but what did you think about um, Felipe surfing at the wave pool? He was riding a little four fin swallowtail. I didn't see it. I, I didn't oh, get didn't. No, I think I was, I think it was a time when we were moving where um, I try to catch every single thing, but then, you know, we were just moving from one state to another state. And let me tell you, moving all your yeah. stuff from a bigger house to a smaller house with two little kids. And two, I mean, it's just, it is, it, it's just all encompassing. So I, I missed, I missed that. I, I will, I can go back and look at it though, right? I'm sure you can. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know if you watch it. Gosh, he was, I will. Just, he was just so, I think it was a real um, mental boost for him because, you know, Medina's won every contest in the wave pool, literally every single one that there's been until this one. And, um, and finally, uh, Felipe is able, able to get the upper hand and then it kind of, you could see, you could see that Medina kind of felt that pressure. And then it was, he wasn't surfing as free. He was, he was in his head. I think there's a lot to be said that for that, for, for everything we do, you know, I was playing guitar earlier and there's a certain strum pattern. I'm doing this one song and it kind of changes during the song. And a lot of times when I play it, I think about it so much. And then today I went, okay, just play it. And don't think about it. Just like sing, just focus on singing the song. And then my hands started doing exactly what it was supposed to do in the strum. And I thought, isn't that funny how like I focused so hard to try and when you try, it just doesn't work. So it's like a philosophical thing where you know, dad, the less, dad, the less you try. My dad, said, my dad told me, he said, you know, in any artistic sport, that if you try even just a tiny bit too, even a tiny bit too much, it just bucks the whole thing up. And yeah. so he's like, it's all, you just have to feel it. <laughs> and I go, that's, I, and he would tell me that all the time. I'm like, I get it. I believe you. And, but how? So how do you cross over into that? Yeah. Thing? And I think that's, <clears throat> that's learning to, to really be quiet and really tuning into yourself and becoming aware, uh, aware of, of that it's not, it, it's not here that where the intelligence is, it's not what you think. It's this bigger thing. Feeling, yeah. you know, and, um, it's just channeling. I was just gonna say when you come to the, when you come to Oz, let's have like a little, let's have like a twin fin comp. You know, a modern, yeah. a modern twin fin comp. You know, like look. You like call me out. You call me out. Yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> what do I got to lose? No one thinks I'm gonna. No one thinks I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, classic. Yeah, that's the that's the um. The, I keep thinking of things, but that's the thing I get when I watch uh, John John compete is I feel that artistic side, you know, I feel like it's not just a measured technical approach. It doesn't look like he's just trying to finish a wave or just get that score. It does, you know, and there are those moments where like he's got to stick a five and he just gets a five, but like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, um, Italo and Gabriel, they take, a lot of waves and a lot of chances and they do radical stuff. And that's kind of like how they get their game going. And whereas John, it's almost like he wants to <clears throat> paint this art piece during the heat or during this competition, you know, while he's in the water. And um, I, I love that there are those real distinct differences in people's personalities and their approach to things. And, um, and I, I think it was more evident probably in your era on the tour, especially when you were first on tour, there was, so many different types of equipment and um you know goofy footers were still second class citizens and uh <laughs> but uh no that i i love those uh those little differences you can see and um 
Well, some and, of the people, some, some some of the servers are just all they care about is winning and winning at all costs. And the other ones were like, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to I'm going to I'm going to surf the way I, I feel most comfortable is within my wheelhouse or whatever. And, um, but I think that the uh, I think that it is wonderful that there are so many different types of, of uh, uh, so many different approaches and and there's still lots of room for the, for surfing to grow and get better and, and I mean for me I think switch dances I, I, I you know like I I'm I think one of the things that isn't talked about that much or maybe it is and I'm not a part of the conversation but justice with the wave pools it's like you can really you, you I think people don't want to surf switch dance because they don't want to blow away you know? and when you know yeah. that the wave is going to be there. You're like, I'll just, I mean, you know, I just serve switch dance for a whole, if I could just keep getting better, I could get better fast switch dance if I was in the wave pool again and again and again and again, you know? So. Yeah. I wonder how good kids are going to be at airs in five years from now after all those wave pool sessions. It's pretty crazy. Like, And then yeah. I like what Kai's doing too, Kai Lenny. Kai's taking the straps to the pool which is like kind of frowned upon by surfers, but it's allowing him a comfortability with landing different rotations. So then when he, you know, he goes back in the ocean on a big wave, um, you know, where he can just have that power handy available that he, he can uh, start pulling off airs he hasn't pulled before or with the straps, he'll start doing crazy stuff at Jaws he hasn't done yet. But um, there's, yeah. there's just such a, you know, guys like Eli Hanneman and obviously Jackson and, um, a lot of the young air guys and Matt Miola's and there, I think there's a lot of good healthy stuff in surfing uh, in, in the variety of surfing and the big wave stuff with Billy Kemper and Ian Walsh and Kua and all those guys. And, um, you know, where Shane kind of like sort of passed the torch to those guys in the last couple of years. And there, yeah, there's still parts of the wave that people don't ride. Mm. So that's where I, that's where I, I like to see the progression going. I know it's going towards airs and all those types of things, but I'd like to see where people can ride on the wave that, and stay on the wave, like upside down and in the tube and in the, in doing turns in those really critical places so they can go in and get out. And that's why I'm always, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm working with acceleration and leverage being able to get the body in those positions so that you can leverage, you can have the leverage so you don't get stuck in the, you know, you don't get stuck in there and get hurt, you know? Um, yeah. That's yeah. exciting to me. So that, and possibly, you know, turns on waves that like Chobu or backdoor and, uh, you know, and in, in places you just don't see turns. Like I, I think there's, there's a great opportunity there to, to do some surfing that no one's ever seen before. Kind of similar, yeah. like you got, you got those guys at Pipeline when they first started, they're riding, taking off on the waves and riding them and they're way out in front of them, you know what I mean? And then, to, for them, if they could fast forward and see what you were doing at Pipeline, be like, oh my God, you know, like, wow, cool, you know? Yeah, it's, it's just getting pushed more and more. I still go out there every day and I see guys that I don't, you know, I haven't really seen much out there. All of a sudden, just, just sending it from way behind where I think you can take off and just pulling in. I'm like, man, it's just gone to this, it's gone to the level it can go because, I mean, guys are just going as deep as possible. And, That's, uh, and that, and that, and that, I'm sure equipment has a lot to do with that too. I mean, you, you like the, you like quads because you can, um, because you can, you can, I mean, why do you like, why do you like quads in those situations? Hmm. I like them just cause you can get more, you get more lift off that fin base on one side, you get more speed. And I think they're a little more stable through like a foam ball in the barrel. You, just, you just try to more slow down and put yourself, you try to put yourself as deep as possible. And then you're the one who chooses, okay, now I got to hit the accelerator to get out of here. And you feel like the quad uh, picks up speed faster yeah. than, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of. Yeah, I think quads and, and even twin fins, I think are better in the barrel than, than thrusters. Yeah, the, well, the twins kind of, you got the fin on the rail, so it pulls you up the face faster. And I, I think if, but wouldn't you say that a single fin or maybe even a bonzer, if the wave was just sitting there, can it sits lower on the wave. It doesn't come up the face so much. It just sits down in that low spot and it's a bigger fin so it can actually go down deeper in the foam ball. Those, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I felt that when I, I had some really deep tube rides at um, 
at Backdoor and um, and uh, Kira and the Mexico, a few places. I've had some really deep tube rides on a Bonzer with that single fin going down low. And I didn't, I could, it wasn't the kind of maybe tube like Fiji where it was like, you know, constant, I had to race it, you know. I think the racing, the quad feels like it would be the, the ideal board for, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, <clears throat> I don't ride anything else at, like in Fiji other than the quad pretty much. Yeah. Um, so I've always, I've kind of always wondered about like if you could make a single fin right, if you get the flex and the depth of the fin and area and all that stuff right. And, um, you know, George Greeno many years ago, I didn't, I didn't know him. I had never met him, obviously knew who he was and followed him and saw the influence he's had in surfing, but I didn't know him, but he got my phone number and, or I got a message to call him or whatever. So I called him and I was like, Hey George, it's Kelly. How you doing? He's like, Hey, now listen, you got to take these pointed noses off these surfboards and these are dangerous. And, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're a world champ and you got to show these people that you don't need a nose. A nose is pointless. It's just there to injure people. And, you know, it's, and he, he gave me about a 20 minute talking to, and I think I yeah. said about three sentences and I was like, all right, good to talk to you. But funny enough, I've been riding some round noses ever since then. I, I have a couple yeah. like more like bullet noses, not, not so much the round noses because I think it cut yeah. the template off too early. But kind of the yeah. bullet, bullety nose is more pointed round noses, I think, makes a lot of sense. You get a little bit, bit of that weight gone, you can keep your rail line and your rocker still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I talked to him about it as well. Um, and in 91, I spent some time with him, surfing with him, riding his mat. Pull, he's pulling fins out under his bed, talking to talking about the way that he laid the glass up. And, and that's how it would twist or bend or all these and then he, everything every every time i'd ask a question <laughs> he'd say well nothing ventured nothing gained so try it basically try it try it try it try it and um i i, I feel like i i've tried a lot of different surfboards a lot of different things i'm open to continuing to try and feel things um it makes sort yeah. exciting uh to try new things and stuff like that so but hey, hey kelly i got here I wait go. don't I go yet I gotta no, don't go yet. I gotta, <laughs> I, <gotta pee. laughs> I gotta show you something. I gotta show you something. Okay. You can't go yet. Talk, talk to your okay. people for a second here. Give me like 20 seconds. I gotta show you something. You're gonna trip out. One okay. Second. So many comments coming through. I, I wish I could read and answer them all. Thanks so much. Um, super fun. You can ask me any questions on my DM or whatever if you have some. I'm happy to answer them. So, Brad. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that Donovan's? This is Donovan's. Yeah. I've yeah. never ridden it. He gave it to me well, years ago, but, you know, it's got all that flex in it. In that, yeah. uh, sorry, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So this yeah. compression yeah. flex zone all the way. Careful, careful. The I, if you, you know what? I, I, I've done that before, and you can break it really easy. It's supposed to just be gradual with the water. You yeah. Know I, have two, gotcha. you know I have two of those. I got two of those. I got a oh, you six got two three of and a 6.9. Yeah. yeah, I have two of them. Yeah. I, they're still in Torquay. And, um, so here's I what I want to uh, fix. I wanted to take this yeah. fin and connect it to, yeah. to the deck right here so that when the tail yeah. flexes, more fin gets revealed, you know? So like, if oh, text, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so it would kind of come out through the, from the deck, from your feet. So your feet really push it down in the, and then uh, expand, extend the rocker, flex the rocker into it. But you yeah, gotta, maybe you gotta minute. try that board. It's pretty. It's it. I. I. It, mine worked pretty good. I've got like I wrote it at. Um, I wrote it at backyards, on a sweepy swell, and then I also wrote it out at. Uh, I wrote it, wrote it out at off the wall. I got a full page shot in Surfer Magazine doing a top turn on it. Um, it's a pink rail board, but um, but yeah, they, there's 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 so much cool stuff we can do with surfboards, and as you and I get older and older and older and older, we need the surfboard to do more and more. <laughs> so, uh, wait isn't it like martial arts where you're supposed to like retain all this information so you, it, you can make a board do anything 
Yeah, yeah, and and it is like martial arts. Like the old master barely has to lift a finger in order in order to 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 thwart the uh, the young whippersnapper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I miss you, man. This is really fun. Yeah, man. Great to catch up, Brad. Thanks everybody hey, for all brother. those uh, messages. I know there was a lot of a lot of questions about the Olympics. I think we handled that kind of early on, but. Maybe we'll do another one. Maybe we'll do one on my channel here soon. Oh, man, there's so many. I just told people, like, sorry, I couldn't get to all the comments, but that if they want to DM me, or, um, I'm happy to I'm happy to answer them and look at them. Um, and then if something comes across and, you know, they want to ask you and, you know, and, and it looks like something that would stimulate a, a fun conversation for us, I can I can I can put it to you via text or whatever and we could you know, maybe have another, another conversation. So fun talking about surfing because we love it so much. We still love it. How lucky are we that we pick something so young that we still want to do and still are excited about. So good. Olivia, I see you out there. Love you. Miss you. Brad, yeah, love you too, say buddy. hi to the kids. I got to hang out with your kids sometime and get to know them. They're going to love you. They're going to love you. Cool, man. Look forward to it. <laughs> look forward to it. But we'll talk before then anyways. Are you guys going to get to Hawaii this winter? We live in the – we live pretty close to your place here. So when you get here, you know, we'll, we'll, it, it, it won't be easy. It won't be, it won't be hard to, hey, to get check it out. Harrow's online. He could have done his uh, Aki impression for us. He's here watching us. Shane no. Harris. <laughs> Is he? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Shane, you got, you got the best Aki. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Shane, <laughs> Shane, put a, uh, I got, I've Shane been drinking a... water and coffee all morning. I gotta use them. Gotta I'm trying use. to make Brad pee in his pants here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, All right buddy. Man. Hey, Shane, put one of those uh, Aki impressions on your uh Yeah, on your do story. it. Yeah, do it, please. Yeah. Okay, Brad. See you, buddy. See you, bud.